What's good people and we're back for another year of NBA 2K tutorials and we're starting out the year with our 2K23 dribble guide to help you get right on the virtual hardwood. So we're going to go over the control changes to dribbling, what to look for and just how to beat defenders off the dribble in 23 on both generations of 2K. And if you like the content we provide, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't so you don't miss any NBA 2K23 content. So alright, let's get it. So first off, let's go over the newest mechanic to prevent over dribbling in 2K, and it's the Adrenaline Boost Meter, which you will find underneath the stamina bar of your player, where you will find three bars, and you lose one each time you perform a hard go or explosive sprint launch. And once you lose all three, your player will become significantly slower and more likely to lose the ball. So you see their goal is to make it so you're a lot more efficient in your movements as a ball handler and get the job done a lot quicker than holding the ball the whole shot clock with one guy. So while you're stationary, you're good. You won't lose any of your bars, but any attack and dribble, you will get docked a bar. So you're gonna have to be careful. So I'm gonna aim to teach you how to beat defenders in one, two, and three dribbles. Now it won't always be one, two, or three, but having this as a baseline will be important. Name of the game is getting defenders uncomfortable, out of position, and working from there. And how do you know they're out of position? For those unfamiliar with my past year's videos, I've mentioned using the free throw line if you're attacking from the top, and the low block to the elbow if you're coming from the sides as a frame of reference to gauge if you have a clear lane or not. Because if you can beat the defender to this spot, layups, dunks, fouls, and kickouts happen. If they beat you to the spot, you're attempting awkward jumpers, thinking the layup was about to happen, and now you're passing in midair. So if it's looking like they're gonna beat you to the spot is when you can start to bust out the counters a lot earlier because you know where you need to beat the defender to and they already got there before you. And then you can open up your other bag of tricks. And as far as countering, you want the defender to think one thing while you do another. You never want them to know where you're going and get there before you even move. They expect you to go this way, but you're going this way. Know what the obvious is and use it to your advantage to keep them a step behind you. You may laugh, but like in scary movies, they open the refrigerator and you expect somebody to be behind it because it's obvious. And you've seen it a hundred times. We don't want to be behind the door. This is a single example of me realizing his likely path and him taking it and then countering off another obvious path by having it all blow up due to his animations. And while I'm speaking on countering and what's hard to think about in the moment, but many nice dribble combos are ruined by attempting your second or third move before the defender had time to even respond to the first one. Like here, this is sloppy. I know he's playing user defense and is gonna respond to my snatchback pretty aggressively after having looking crazy. I'm excited, but I start my second attack way too fast. Am I not waiting a half second? Even though I was 100% attacking the lane this game, you miss if you suddenly are wide open and you're also already running towards him while he's still stunned from your initial move. And at this point, you're just praying he's gonna move. So give yourself and the defender a split second to process things. This here ends up much better where I give him a half second to respond to the space I have and I don't run the risk of running directly into him because I did my first and second move before he had time to respond to anything. But first off, let's talk about the crossover dribble. To perform a crossover, you flick the right stick directly up, standing in place, or while you're on the move. Specifically speaking for performing on the move, this is one of the basic dribbles to get defenders off balance as they try to cut off your attacking path, and you can change directions using it. You just wanna make sure you give yourself enough room from the defender to pull this off so they can't accidentally bump into you and you end up losing the ball as a result because you are still dribbling the ball in front of you. On the move is where the crossover can do the most damage and there are two effective ways to beat guys off the dribble with the crossover controls. First is while moving sideways with a head of steam and most importantly space from the defender Flicking up on the right stick can have your defender leaning at the wrong time as you change directions. And it's important you're moving diagonal towards the hoop or else he won't attack towards it. And another is performing this move while you're moving completely sideways. This gives you another quick stop animation, but you have to finish attacking yourself after performing it. Now from a standstill position, it's utilized well with the pick and roll and some left stick movements after activating your crossover. 
with the ball opposite of the screen, which means that the screen is on the left, the ball is in your right, and swap that for the other side. You can activate the cross by flicking the right stick up, and then continue to move the left stick directly up into the left or right towards the screen, the fake going one way, then crossing back the other. You can even flip this and fake towards the screen and drive away from it to keep defenders off balance and make them more likely to bite. Flicking up on the right stick and moving the left stick up into the ball hand side performs a makeshift in and out dribble, which paired well with you faking into the threat of the pick and roll can open up a lane for yourself. Now new to NBA 2K23 are attacking crossovers, which gets players attacking from a standstill position laterally or downhill. And to pull it off, you hold the right trigger on your controller and then the right stick up or your right stick up into your off ball hand side. So up left or up right. And with these, they cause a reaction by the defender, whether computer controlled or user, which you can attack or counter off of. Next up, we got the between the legs cross, which has been a favorite of mine to get away from defenders in your face by allowing you to change directions quickly sharply and without the ball being exposed against their pressure defense. While it doesn't cover as much ground as the crossover, it is another effective move to get defenders off balance due to the quick sharp cut the other way by the ball handler. And you attempt this by flicking the right stick directly to the left or right, whichever hand you do not have the ball in currently. Again, this allows you to change directions quickly against defenders who are about to or have already cut off your drive allowing you to change directions ASAP. So you can use this move closer to defenders and from a standstill, you can definitely explode out of them a lot easier to blow by defenders if the lane is open. Next for the between the legs cross escape. You attempt this move by holding the right trigger on your controller and flicking the right stick directly to the left or right of the hand you do not have the ball in. This is a reactive move and gets people moving as a result of its movement. A favorite combination of mine is before the animation ends. While still holding the left trigger, aim the left stick at the hoop to perform a crossover directly off of it. Now let's go over the behind the back dribble, which can be performed from a standstill or most popularly on the move. This protects the ball the best from defenders trying to steal it from you. And to perform a behind the back dribble, you move the right stick down and to the left if the ball is in your right hand and down and to the right if the ball is in your left. So you're always aiming down and towards the hand the ball is not in. This is an excellent move to perform when you also feel the defender is about to rush you to try and steal the ball. Just make sure you're heading towards the rim as you perform it to cover as much ground as possible. Next up, we got the behind the back escape dribble. And you attempt this from a standstill dribble and you hold the right trigger on your controller and move the right stick down into the left or down into the right. And the side you're aiming towards is the side you do not have the ball on. Next, we got the attacking behind the back. It creates an explosive behind the back dribble to get by defenders. And what's special about this is you can create it from a standstill dribble by aiming the right stick down into the left if the ball is in your right and down into the right if the ball is in your left hand, while also aiming the left stick towards the rim to catch your defenders off guard. Next, let's talk about the step back, which you achieve by flicking the right stick down. And it doesn't matter whether you're holding turbo or not to perform this. And you use this to create space against defenders in your face to give yourself room to work from a standstill position. If you're facing a user who is defending you on ball, you might even catch them lose contain, react until you step in back, and you can then drive right by them. So be prepared to attack any newfound space immediately after you finish this move. You can also create an on the move step back out of canceled step back shots by holding the right stick in any direction while driving and letting go before he goes up for the shot so you're able to continue your dribble. Now for the in and out dribble. Its purpose is to get defenders to believe you're going one way but actually end up keeping the ball on the same side. So you can pair this with a pick and roll the opposite way, or if you indeed have a lane one way, you can get them to try and beat you to the spot with this move. And to do this, you flick the right stick up and to the right if the ball is in your right hand, and up and to the left if the ball is in your left. 
and make sure you're not holding turbo or else you will perform another move entirely. This move you really only want to do against humans as the computer won't bite on the fate the other way, but a user might react to the movement. You also want to make sure you have a bit of space before you do this so you can take advantage of it if the defender moves out the way for you. Now for the hesitation dribble, and this move is effective standing still more so than on the move. And to perform this, you flick the right stick directly to the right if the ball is in your right hand, and directly to the left if it's in your left hand. Actually, it is pretty effective on the move as long as you're not going directly downhill, as using the hesitation can create a bit of space for you to branch into other moves to open up a shot for yourself, or get the defender to commit and open up a clear lane. Actually, like I mentioned, this is a good move to use going sideways, particularly into a screen and letting the defender tell you what you're gonna do by how he reacts. Next, we got the hesitation escape, which aims to create space for the ball handler laterally by creating a bit of movement for yourself to shoot or drop. And you perform this by holding the right trigger and then the right stick directly to the right if the ball is in your right hand and to the left if it's in your left. You can even think of combining both moves to extend the amount of separation you can create for yourself here. Take somebody like Kadu as a crazy hezzy escape that forces you to do something against it because of the amount of space he creates and you can then build off of it. Next is the split dribble, which you can create by first aiming the right stick down into the side the ball is not in and then aiming the left stick up into the side the ball is currently in. So down and away of your empty hand first, then up and towards your ball hand last. Next, let's go over the spin move, which helps you continue to the hoop when the defender is preparing to wall you off. And to do it, you wanna rotate the right stick from your ball hand and swing it around the bottom to the other side and quickly let go. I gotta give a shout out to this guy. Me, I'm waiting for him to expose the ball with his left hand. And what does he do? He fakes to the left and spins right off of me. Then he ends up destroying me with a spin layup. Beautiful. You wanna make sure also that the left stick is being aimed towards the hoop or else he won't create any forward momentum and you'll end up just doing it sideways. And when starting to spin move, it helps to prepare for what's next. If you start to spin around the three point line, you can give yourself an opportunity to chain it together with another move once it's done. Any closer and there are dedicated moves for that that I will go over in another video. Now you can also get a bit creative with your spin move. So first off, when you swing the right stick from your ball hand around the bottom, if you flick the left stick down, right after your ball handler starts to spin animation, he will retreat backwards. Having this in your arsenal can open up the spin move if somebody wants to play you tight as soon as they see this and give you clean jumpers as a result until they adjust. Next is the half spin whose sole purpose is to be a counter after you have given your opponent a heavy dose of spin moves. Pascal Siakam definitely has this in his bag. And to pull off a half spin, you rotate the right stick from your ball hand to the top of your controller. Now to perform a sham guy dribble. On the move, you wanna hold turbo, then flick the right stick to your right if you have the ball in your right hand, and to the left if it's in your left. And then in quick succession, move the right stick up into the opposite side, which will be to your off ball side. So if the ball is in your right hand, aim the right stick to the right, then up and to the left. And lastly, we have the hard stop, which you pull off by quickly tapping the left trigger button. This can get defenders to over pursue and open up other options for yourself. And with that, let me know down below what is your favorite go-to move to pull off in NBA 2K23. And stay tuned here at Sports Gamers Online for more NBA 2K tips, where I'll show you the best moves to beat computer defenders coming soon. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris from Sports Gamers Online. Thank you all for watching, and be good, y'all.